Okay then, so yeah, so that's the end of the test. Okay. Anything you did? Um, I think on that island when I stalled, um, I probably failed there. Congratulations, yeah. <laughs> you've, uh, you've passed the mock test. Hey guys, welcome to another video and today we have another mock driving test in which I will be testing uh, the driving of a lunar driver just to find out if uh, he's ready for his actual driving test or not yeah so uh, the learners that turn up here they've not had any lessons with me it's a first time i'm meeting dan here today and uh, for any of you that do want to take part in one of these mock tests which are absolutely free i'm going to tell you in a moment how you can do that but before that any of you that are learning to drive please check out this video for the ultimate driving course yeah, it's definitely going to help you save time and money on lessons for those of you that have already seen the video just skip the next uh, what 90 seconds Hooray! So this course really filled my knowledge gaps and I became more confident. After watching some of the videos on the course, I felt really comfortable with the extra knowledge. Before I passed my driving test, I was really nervous. It really helped me have more confidence and I would take what I learned during the course into my lessons and really aid that. The videos? obviously help you because you're going into that lesson knowing exactly what you're going to do and just having that knowledge just makes that lesson faster and you feel a lot better 38 easy to understand precise videos covering every single topic required to pass the driving test these are not just theory based they are practical videos demonstrating everything from moving off and stopping a vehicle to all of the maneuvers and every other module required so if you're lacking knowledge or maybe your instructor has forgotten to cover something or you're just not grasping a certain topic then this course has it covered you can watch the videos before your driving lessons which means you'll get into the car knowing exactly what to do this will definitely save you time on your lessons okay so to take part in one of these uh, mock driving tests all you need to do is drop us a message on instagram at djn driving so follow us and drop us a message and um, we just select people randomly yeah so uh, i do get a lot of messages i can't always reply to every single message so sorry about that but yeah if you do want to take part in one of these just drop us a message there um dan so tell us a bit about your driving please um so i've had 12 hours within the instructor and okay. then i've done around about 12 hours in my own car so you got your own car yeah yeah. Okay. So, uh, anything in your driving that you're not uh, uh, too sure about, or you feel you need a lot more practice um, on? Emergency stops um, and a bit of like parking as well. Uh, okay. A lot of reverse parking. Okay. Cool. So you know how these videos work, yeah? You've been watching them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you do make a fault, I won't say anything when you make the fault. We'll talk about that at the uh, during the feedback at the end. Yeah. yeah. But for those of you who are watching, um, if Dan does make a fault, any serious faults will be in red text. Any normal faults will be in amber text. Yeah. Right. Any questions before we start? No. Have you done the show me tell me questions yet? No. Okay. We'll leave that. But may obviously make sure you practice them before you go for your actual test. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. So uh, whenever you're ready, then. If you could move off, we're not going to be following the sat nav. I'm going to give you direction signs to follow. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. So, like I said, guys, meeting Dan for the first time, and he hasn't driven this car before, so it might take a bit of time getting used to that. Yeah, to press the clutch. Yeah, clutch down to start the car. Dan moves off well and carries out good observations before doing so. He's not used to the car, so brakes quite harshly. Wasn't expecting that. God. God. Why are the brakes not like, going? Uh, okay. <laughs> the brakes are a bit sharp. On roads such as these, where there are no signs, look out for street lights, which normally indicate it's a 30 zone, as it's in a built up area. Dan is at the correct speed. Ahead, the road narrows. Dan positions well and doesn't get too close to the curb. After this hill, there are parked vehicles on our side of the road. This means that the oncoming vehicles have priority. Dan stops and holds back well. Please. 
This right turn he does well, but at the next turn, which is straight after this one, Dan breaks too hard. And at the end turn right again. The braking was sharp enough for you guys to get a glimpse of the best driving footwear available. This is actually a very good plug here. Saying the sharp as these ones. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> and if you could park up anywhere safe on the left. When parking up, Dan meant the curb. Our speed was very slow and it was only for a second or two, so it's not a serious fault as no danger was caused. And move off when you're ready, please. He moves off well, carrying out the POM routine in the correct order. When driving, noticing a hazard early on and planning is vital, just as Dan shows here. He notices the cyclist in good time, assesses what's happening behind, and overtakes safely, leaving plenty of space. There are parked cars ahead, so we have to move over to the right. Dan should have signalled, but doesn't. The driver to our right does notice the situation ahead and gives us way. I didn't think they were going to let me go then. It's a nice guy. He'd just come a bit too close, that's why I sort of like stopped. The speed limit here is 40 miles per hour. Remember the speed limit isn't a target, but if it's safe to do so, you should build up to that speed. And Dan does this well. At the end of the road, turn left please. This is a steep uphill junction. Dan shows good control by not rolling back or stalling. Now I'm going to ask Dan to do the parking on the right manoeuvre. This is probably the closest he came to making a serious fault. Okay Dan, when it's safe to do so, could you park up on the right hand side of the road please? He starts off well and parks up in a good position, even though he thinks he's blocked a driveway but hasn't. I think I might be blocking the driveway a little bit, you know where it's dipped. Okay. Right, if you could uh, reverse to Collins. Now when reversing, notice how Dan begins to steer to the right as soon as he starts to reverse. And because of this, he does mount the curb, but then comes back off it. And just like earlier, it was only for a couple of seconds and there was no danger caused.
Is that because I'm near the curb? Uh, sorry, I would love to help you out, mate. <laughs> I was on the curb. <laughs> um, a little bit more. Okay, and move off when you're ready, please. Because we are parked on the right hand side, it's important to check the left blind spot just before moving. Dan observes well. Now here we find out the reason behind Dan getting too close to the curb. This is a much like wider car. So you, you've been driving on the curb? Now I'm going to ask Dan to do the emergency stop. I decided to put away the shoebox before we do it. Okay, surely I'm going to ask you to carry the emergency stop. Okay. He brakes well, but watch how he rushes for the gear whilst braking. When stopping like this, you should keep both hands on the steering wheel for maximum control and only select neutral once you have stopped. Stop! Stop! Thank you, and move off when you're ready. He moves off with good all-round observations, including both the blind spots, which you must check after the emergency stop. I've asked Dan to follow signs to Warsaw, which is right, and we have a choice of two lanes. It's best to keep to the left lane, as this will position you in the left lane after the turn. You can use the right hand lane, but then we'll need to move back over to the left at some point, as the right hand lane is also used for overtaking as well as for turning right. Whilst turning, Dan keeps to his lane and doesn't drift to the right as I see many learners do. He approaches this roundabout well and again shows good lane discipline. This roundabout, Dan makes a fault, which he thought was a serious one. The roundabout is quite busy. When moving off, Dan brings the clutch up too fast, so stalls. He reacted well and moved off at the next available gap. During the feedback at the end, Dan says that he thought this would have been a serious fault for holding up the traffic. Like I said, he didn't really miss any other gaps. If he had stalled again and missed opportunities to go, then it could have been a serious fault. So stall? Yeah. We are taking the third exit, so as we reach the second exit, which is about now, he should check the mirrors, signal left 
and then start to move over if it's safe. He does this a bit late, and this could lead to other drivers thinking that we may be going back around, and them overtaking us on the left. He approaches this right turn at a good speed and doesn't cut the corner. Always remember not to steer too early. And park up anywhere safe on the left please. Now we're going to end the test here and it's time to break the good news to Dan. Thank you. And switch off the engine and we're going to end the test here. Yep, just pop the key down there. Okay then, so yeah, so that's the end of the test. Okay. Anything you did? Um, I think on that island when I stalled, um, I probably failed there. So you think that stalling would be a fail? I don't, I don't know, but I didn't roll back. Yeah, so did you really cause any danger to anyone? No. Did you hold up anyone for too, too long? Maybe, yes. You reckon? Yeah. But yeah, that stall, you, you didn't miss the one gap because of the stall, yeah? Okay. If you'd stalled again there, then maybe we would have thought about marking as a serious. But stalling the ones, and then, like I said, you only missed that one gap because of the stall. After that, you, you took okay. the next available gap here, so not a serious fault there. Is okay. it minor? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, do you think you did? Do you think you passed or failed? Um. It's only that island that I thought I failed on. Um, I'm not too sure about anything else. Um, maybe when I am, you know, when I was reversing, I went up a curb and I didn't realise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, with that, even when we parked at once, you went on the curb slightly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, your speed was very slow and there's no one around. Yeah. Okay. okay. But if you, were, I've, I've heard in the past where people have gone on the curb quite a bit. Yeah, okay. on the pavement and uh, at quite a, uh, a bit more of a speed then now uh, it can be marked as a serious but again that was a minor for both of them yeah and you know that reversing one you went into the cave for a bit then you came back off it yeah, yeah? okay it's just like just on the edge but you know if you are touching the curb yeah just do your checks an edge forward okay yeah so at your position the only reason you got that close because as soon as you start to reverse you steer to the right yeah okay. so both of those are marked as minors yeah which means congratulations <laughs> yeah you've uh, you've passed the mock test which uh, like you've seen on the channel yeah it's yeah. um uh quite rare we get we get passes yeah okay but that was uh overall really good really good like i said those couple of issues with the curve yeah that the stalling wasn't as serious you reacted well yeah, um, the one thing I would say, you know, you mirror your side mirrors, yes. you know, when you're in, uh, you're in traffic and that, yeah, a light's moving off, yeah, check both the side mirrors, okay. yeah, you're looking at that right one, but what could be in this small gap? Oh, I'm not here, yeah, cyclist, yeah, okay, so, um, just, yeah, a bit more in your mirrors, especially when you're moving off them just before you're braking, before you brake, it's also checking your centre mirror, yes, that's the situation behind you, and, um, yeah, so nothing uh, serious there really. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff to your driving. Yeah, a lot of good stuff like with the cyclist, the awareness. Yeah, that one time when you said that car was um, uh, quite close. Yeah. You, know, you, you, you remember when he gave you away? Yeah. Yeah, you noticed the situation, Ed, which was good. So you needed to move over to the right. Yeah, you could have signaled. Okay, okay. but that, that driver there, he saw the situation. It, that doesn't happen often either where they start slowing down for you and, and, and let you go so you could have just assessed that a bit sooner yeah okay. so you didn't just slow down that much because that guy was slowing down for us yeah okay but overall brilliant okay any questions no that's that's all good got no doubt it, like <laughs> if you pass this test yeah okay um i've got no doubt that you'll pass your actual uh, actual one as well yeah yeah. Okay, right then, thank you very much for coming down to do that mock test. And guys, like always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.